Hello my friends and welcome back to another Sunday Reset. My name is Tiffany and I'm so happy to have you joining me today. In today's video we are going to be doing some deep cleaning here in my kitchen and we are getting prepared for fall decorating. I am so excited. This video is designed to get my kitchen area cleaned up again. It is a hot mess as you can see. I'm trying to show you all of the super messy areas like my trash area here oh my goodness everything is just so dirty and needs a good wipe down this is what happens when you have a lived in home we love our home we live here and enjoy every second of it and it shows in the mess that will be created in it so we're gonna go ahead and get started by cleaning the cabinets now I've done this before in videos I like to use the powder OxyClean I put it in some warm water and that's what I use to wipe down the cabinets now my cabinets are uh, from cabinets.com I've talked about this before they are in a shaker style and they are painted in the color alabaster by Sherwin-Williams so they're a little bit of a warm white and I love that about them I know that there are lots of mixed feelings about white kitchens because it does feel like you can see a lot of the dirt and the dust that piles up on your cabinets and that is true especially the more ornate of a cabinet that you have it's definitely going to hold on to dirt and dust but I have no problem just wiping them down every couple of months to make sure that they stay clean if something gets really, really dirty, I'll definitely wipe it down in the moment. But for the most part, I try to do this about every two months or so. So the nice thing is I feel like that's about the time that I'm changing out my decor for the season. So I try to do this every single time I'm about to, you know, change uh, decorations up. That seems to be an easy way to remember. So like I said, I just uh, filled a bowl there with some warm water and about a half a scoop of the powdered OxyClean and it just helps to get things really, really clean. Here's a nice close up of my hood vent. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so dusty you guys but that's okay I love this hood vent so it was worth it it was worth it to have you know all these uh, details here on this hood uh, even if I knew that that meant that they were going to get dusty and dirty so using a microfiber cloth that I purchased at um, the Dollar Tree I believe either Dollar Tree or the dollar store 99 cent store I'm pretty sure it's Dollar Tree I have several of them um, I probably have four or five green ones and I have a few other colors and I just love these I love to clean with these and wiping everything down with a paper towel just because everything was still pretty wet and I didn't want it to take too long to dry because I felt like it would just attract more dust if it was wet so wiped it down but gonna take a minute now to go through my entire kitchen wiping down all of the cabinets making sure that they're nice and clean and then we'll move on to the next part of our deep clean in the kitchen When Danny and I were designing our kitchen space, one of the things that was a non-negotiable for me besides the white cabinets was to have drawers on the bottom. This was not something we had in our previous home. It wasn't something I've had in any home, <laughs> but it was really important to me just because I feel like it's so easy to use. And this is our forever home. We plan to spend the rest of our lives here and I wanted something that was gonna be easy no matter if I'm 40 or 80, I wanted to easily be able to get to the items in my cabinets and so having the drawers just seemed like the best option because I'm utilizing the entire space and I really really am so happy with this choice so if you are renovating your kitchen or designing a kitchen and you haven't considered drawers I would highly highly recommend them I feel like it made all the difference in my home in my kitchen 
and I actually regret not putting in the drawers over in the coffee bar area because it just makes the space so much more usable. You use every inch of the cabinet. So I love them and would highly recommend them. And I think I've said that in a lot of videos, but I still feel that way. I feel like every day I feel more. <laughs> like that. I just am so thankful to have these drawers here. So the poles that are on my uh, cabinets I purchased, um, I think I got these on Amazon. I had originally found them at Home Depot and then when we decided that it was what we were going to use, I purchased them in bulk on Amazon. I will try to have them linked for you in my Amazon storefront. I'll try to get a close-up. Um, when this goes live on YouTube, I'll try to post a close-up on my Instagram. Make sure you're following me there at, at Charlotte Grove Farmhouse. And um, I'd love to show you, like, they do have a lot of detail on them. So I'd love to show that to you over on Instagram. So make sure you're following me there. Get some sleep if you give up the fight. If only just for a bit, there's a new day to leave behind your troubles. There's a new day, and it will say. Another key design element when we were planning out our kitchen uh, were these two big drawers here in the middle of this section. We needed a place that could hold big stock pots. We have a big lobster pot and um, I just wanted a space that would you know, be big enough for big items. I technically think I could probably fit my instant pot in one of these drawers, but that just lives in my pantry, um, which is in that, that room right there behind me with the black door. But um, that top big drawer houses all of my large stock pots and um, extra pots and pans. And then the bottom large drawer has all of my baking items in it. So when we were designing our kitchen, which it is custom designed, every part of the kitchen is custom designed, um, I wanted to make sure that we included space for those larger items. So if you are designing a space, make sure you think about all of the uh, kitchen cookware and gadgets that you have and anything you may want to have and make sure that you have a space for all of that. Another design element in our kitchen that I wanted that was going to help elevate the look without elevating the price uh, were these cabinets here above um, the refrigerator and the pantry cabinet um, to the left of the refrigerator. So um, the cabinet above the fridge, that's pretty common. That's something that most people typically have. The difference that we did here was we pulled it forward so that it was flush with the refrigerator instead of being pushed back. And that just helped it to look like a custom space. And then the pantry beside it here that I'm cleaning now, we did the same thing with that. We pulled it out so that it wasn't pushed back. Um, it, the, the actual cabinet itself is not um, deeper. Uh, it's just that it's pulled away from the wall a little bit and uh, you can't tell because of the piece that's on the end that's connected to the wall so it looks like it's all one size but these cabinets are actually just mounted a little bit away from the wall so that way they are flush with the refrigerator so if you're doing something like that you want refrigerator depth um, versus cabinet depth and it just makes a huge difference so I love that space and since we're over here I figured I might as well get this refrigerator cleaned <laughs> this is something I need to do all the time I don't do it as often as I should because sometimes it just feels like do I really want to do this is this really important right now 
I could be doing something else or I could be scrubbing this refrigerator for the 100th time today when I know little tiny hands are going to be all over it. I do not um, stop my children from getting snacks through the day or water or drinks or ice or whatever. And so there's always going to be handprints all over my refrigerator. And, you know, the saying goes that one day you're going to miss those things. So I'm trying not to, you know, worry too much about those little things like fingerprints all over the place because I know there's going to come a day where there'll be less of them. I hope that my children stay nice and close and, you know, maybe those little tiny fingerprints that are, you know, here now will be gone for a short period of time and then they'll be replaced by all my gorgeous grandbabies. The next area that I'm going to wipe down is my favorite part of my kitchen and that is this hutch cabinet. This was actually my husband's idea. Thank God for Danny. It's such a good idea. He actually got the idea from my cousin Susan. She has a cabinet like this in her kitchen. Um, however, her um, glass is not see-through so it's actually more functional for her. She's got you know a lot of good storage space in there because you can't see it all where mine is more of a decorative space but I absolutely love 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 the space I love to decorate it I feel like it just brings such a cozy feel to my kitchen and I don't have a lot of wall space to you know have a lot of other types of decor but I love a lot of decor I'm a more is more kind of person so having this space here is just so nice and because the glass is you know clear and it still gets a ton of light in there I have plants on every shelf in there I think I have five plants in that cabinet and they're all thriving and doing really well so love that area gonna move on over to my pantry door now this door was another custom um, design decision I had seen a picture on Pinterest of a cabinet door or I'm sorry a pantry door like this with um, the window panes this is a nine window I believe um, if you have this is a very narrow door so if you have a normal size door it'll probably be a 12 pane um, or 15 but I this is just a tiny little door here so I actually ordered this from Home Depot it was around $200 and we painted it in the color tricorn black by Sherwin Williams and I just I knew I wanted like an anchoring piece that was going to make the kitchen feel really cozy and I wanted elements of black since we were doing the brick backsplash so I feel like this door really brought that in and it just looks really nice I did put a gold um, bronze colored uh, handle on the door just as something a little bit different all my other doors have black handles and obviously didn't want to put black on there so I just felt like having the gold was appropriate and it looked really really nice so I love of this door so much I get a lot of compliments on it so thank you I feel like it was a really good design touch my husband wasn't sure <laughs> but now that it's there he absolutely loves it and this is another space that gets a ton of fingerprints but I'm okay with that moving on to the stove I think I've mentioned in previous videos this is probably one of my least favorite chores. <laughs> it's 
cleaning the stove. It does make a big impact though, especially because I use it so often, but I just don't enjoy cleaning it. I should be better. I should do it all the time and then it wouldn't be a big deal, but because I don't enjoy it, I let it go a little too long and then it kind of gets backed up. So it was not bad this day at all because my mom was actually visiting and she had just scrubbed it down the day before. So now I'm just kind of cleaning up the all the stainless steel parts on it. I'm using the Wyman stainless steel cleaner. I actually purchased this um, usually from TJ Maxx or Home Goods. They always have it there for like $3. And I use it even on the glass part of the door. It makes it super shiny and it does a really nice job so we're just gonna get this all shined up and then we'll move on one part of the stove we're not cleaning that needs to happen is the oven I have got to do it and we are hosting Thanksgiving this year so I need to do it sooner than later <laughs> you're gonna see that in a future video it definitely needs it we cook a lot of homemade pizzas in this oven so it definitely needs to be cleaned but I do not enjoy cleaning the oven. So I'm going to be doing some research about easy ways. If you guys have some ideas, holler at me down below in the comment section. I would love to do something that is easy, easy, easy because I do not enjoy cleaning that oven. So let me hear all of your awesome ideas. One part of the oven we are going to clean is this bottom drawer here and right underneath it. So this drawer gets touched a lot with toes as we're cooking and whatnot. And as you see, there's a little piece of plastic still left on. And I'm picking up hair from the floor because there was a bunch of stuff underneath there. So we're just gonna get that wiped off and then we're gonna clean the floor underneath because it was yucky, yucky. But that was a whole lot better. Probably the one item in my kitchen that has more fingerprints than anything else is my dishwasher. And that's because my kids are the ones unloading and loading it. So my little children, my three little boys, they are 10, eight and six about to be seven their job is to empty the dishwasher every day so that is what they do so they're constantly touching it and then my oldest son it's his job to do the dishes after um, dinner and to load up the dishwasher and while he's doing that my daughter's putting away all of the food gathering up all the dishes for him scraping them all and then putting all the food away and cleaning all the counters and everything so that dishwasher gets touched a lot <laughs> All right, moving into the trash um, cabinet. Now this drawer, cabinet, whatever you wanna call it, uh, another area that gets used a lot and is absolutely trashed. <laughs> so uh, no um, pun intended. <laughs> we're gonna clean this area up. So I'm just uh, spraying it down here really quickly and then we're gonna take um, a clean microfiber cloth and we're gonna wipe this down it's not the same one I used for the cabinets but it's the same type I do believe they come in two packs when you buy them at the Dollar Tree um, so that's what we're using but inside of this cabinet it gets really really dirty and um, you know lots of food and whatever else from the actual trash so we're just gonna wipe this down really good and then we're gonna clean out the actual trash can as well because that gets really dirty too and then this whole area will be like new.
just like that, the trash cabinet is back to being clean and we get to put a new bag in and it feels so much better. So, so glad I finally got that checked off my list. It was, it was a long time coming. <laughs> Now we're going to move into dusting. So I'm just going to kind of take this clean, dry microfiber rag and we're just going to dust everything off. So uh, mostly things just kind of get a little bit dusty um, and the things closest to the stove like this might get a little bit oily. This one here was, so I'm actually using a wet microfiber cloth to clean that off. Um, but for the most part, everything just needs a little wipe down um, because things get dusty in the kitchen and you know everywhere in your house that's just a part of having you know decorative pieces but I like that I like to have a lot of decorative pieces I feel like it makes the, the space feel really warm and inviting and lived in and I love it so I know somebody's gonna ask me about these canisters these are from Hobby Lobby they are my favorite part of my kitchen decor um, I purchased them about two to two and a half years ago I actually found the last one right before we left Las Vegas so I am so sorry that I cannot link these for you and I have not seen them available again at Hobby Lobby but if I ever do I promise you I will let you know right Right away because they are very well loved and I get a lot of compliments on them so thank you <laughs> and I so wish that I could um, you know link these for you because I know that they are beautiful and I love how you know they're not perfect and the color is fantastic they're that really great cream color so that little plant riser there is from Michaels although I've seen ones very very similar at Target um, and the little plant there is just one of my pothos plants um, with a really cute little vase from TJ Maxx. So now we're moving to the other side of the kitchen, the other uh, counter space, and I'm just wiping down the items in this tray. The tray is from Target. It was actually, I bought it on clearance. It was on clearance for $20 last summer, I believe. Um, and then the recipe holder is from Hobby Lobby and um, this little egg holder I actually got on Amazon and those wooden eggs are from the Target dollar spot and then these two items here the little bowl is from Home Goods I think so is the creamer pitcher and then that spoon I got at an antique shop this cake stand I got at Ikea I did talk about this in a recent video I love it Look at back there, there's some random potatoes. <laughs> I checked them, they freaked me out at first because I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything growing out of them or coming out of them, but just some potatoes that had fallen behind there. So this is why you gotta move your decor and clean it every now and again because stuff gets stuck back there. So just wiping that all down, including this dough bowl here that I have. Um, that has some wooden pieces along with some faux eucalyptus. So when you're wiping down your kitchen, don't forget to do your uh, plugs. And I have a lot of night lights here. Make sure you clean those. So last thing we're going to do is dust my plants. They need a good dusting too. And I'm spraying them down with miracle Grow's Leaf Shine. And this stuff just works really, really well. You spray it on and just kind of gently wipe it off. Make sure you're using a clean microfiber cloth or a paper towel or washcloth, not something that has any other kind of cleaning product on it because that will definitely damage your plant and can potentially kill your plant or give it some kind of disease. So make sure you're using a clean washcloth or you know microfiber cloth like I'm using here and you are cradling the leaves when you wipe them down so as you see here I am holding the back of the leaf and I'm just giving it a good little wipe down that way I'm not worried about the leaf falling off and look there's a new growth <laughs> so excited so and I lied to you about that being the last thing the last thing I think I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know <laughs> 
But uh, the next thing is scrubbing down my sink. Now I tried so hard to give you a good close view of the marks that my sink gets um, because in these shots it just looks so incredibly white but the truth is it does get like metal marks along the bottom and I have gotten a lot of great suggestions about putting towels in the sink and getting you know a rack for the sink I like the look of just the sink and my son is the one doing the dishes most of the time and so I think that the um, you know towel at the bottom gets forgotten but it's really really simple to get those marks up because I just put a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend down there give it a good scrub and it comes right up so if you have a sink like that give that a try and you can also bleach your sink that is something I do uh, fairly regularly as well so we're gonna go ahead and wipe down these counters and then we're both gonna be surprised to see <laughs> what comes next I guess the only thing that makes sense to come next is the floors, duh. <laughs> I completely forgot about that part, but you definitely want to work your way from the top down. So start, you know, with the the highest areas like your cabinets and things like that and then work your way down. So that's what we're doing now. I'm just going to do a quick vacuum and that rug there that is underneath my sink, that is from Target. It is uh, a jute rug, um, but it is one that has like the microfiber in it or it's, maybe it's rubber. I don't know. It's supposed to be one of those like shock absorbing but it is so dirty. I'm going to try to clean it, but if I can't, it was only $20 at Target. So I may look for a new one because so much has been dropped on it. It's just really dirty. <laughs> so we'll see what ends up happening, but we're just going to give the floor a good vacuum from all that dusting and everything that we did. And then we're going to do my second least favorite chore next to cleaning the stove. And that is mopping. I'm going to give this floor a good mop. I'm using the O Cedar mop. I do put a little bit of laundry soap in the water just to give it a really nice clean smell and it helps to just take up any areas on uh, the floor that are a little bit sticky or anything like that there's my little people <laughs> there's Griffin I'm telling him hurry up go through buddy go go uh, there's always people they always make a cameo don't they <laughs> I told you we live here so this is how stuff gets done. I just keep going. I just push through and work around them. So let's go ahead and finish mopping the floor. Is it my friends the kitchen is spotless and gleaming from the top to the bottom I am so thankful that I got this done it really really needed a good wipe down and this is something like I said I try to do every couple of months because man it does add up after a while so I hope that this video brought you motivation to scrub down an area in your home that really needs it if you're feeling like it's got some you know, neglecting that's been happening maybe it's time to give that area a good scrub down yourself so hope this gives you the motivation and relaxation you're looking for today I want to say a huge thank you you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel and everyone who has been watching my videos I can't thank you enough for all this recent growth it has been so much fun watching the channel grow and I'm so excited for what the future has to bring thank you again my friends I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day I will see you in the next one take good care of yourself bye bye my friends mm -hmm.